a great believer in the power of positive thinking. Yeah. I'm also a great believer in actually the power of smiling. Okay. I say to people so many times offline, yeah, we were born with a remarkable gift as humans. It doesn't require 20 years of study, mastery of foreign, foreign languages. Do animals smile? No, yeah. they don't smile. Is that true? They don't have any mastery of foreign languages either, as far as I'm aware. Is that really true? No animals smile. Some animals laugh, don't they? Don't monkeys laugh? Have you seen a us, smiling animal? An animal smiling at you. They might give you a wave, they may laugh in a rather strange way. That may actually mean actually they're a bit scared of you. It's like a defense mechanism. They may bare their teeth, for example. They may throw their arms around. That's a little bit of fear, though. But have you ever seen an animal smile? I don't think I have. That's a good question, isn't it? Mm. Unfortunately, we have no animals here to ask the question to personally. It's almost like we've got a pig here saying, oh, by the way, you know, like, can you tell us? Well, actually, it's like, let Robert amuse you with a very interesting story, and let's see if I can just see your lips curl a little bit and a <laughs> smile forming. Well, the other thing about smiling with humans, which I think is maybe not unique to us, but it's certainly quite a dominant feature, is that if you smile at somebody else, they will almost always smile back. It's hard to be smiled at without returning the smile. I think if it's a genuine smile. Yes, I think it is, but it's actually an extension of that which is even more interesting. And I tell you, actually, in the context of, in fact, offline dinner I hosted a few years ago, and there's a guy who was there, he came a couple of times, in fact, nice fellow, but nothing, I would say, particularly remarkable about him. I couldn't say particularly handsome or moneyed or travelled or clever, but he had one amazing gift. When he laughed... The whole world laughed along. Yes. Literally, right. and it's amazing to see it. And you've no idea what the joke is, right. but somehow you are carried along by this wave of enthusiasm. But I think that's true of laughter and uh, true of smiling, partly because we are animals, actually, and in, we're animals in the sense that we are kind of mimetic. We mime one another, we copy one another. We, you know, especially when we look at each other. Like, if you look at me and smile, I'm more likely to smile back, right? But if you're, I'm not going to copy your smile if you're looking off somewhere else. So I think we mirror one another a lot. And I think that's something to do with, is it what primates are like? We have that kind of mimetic Do we have a greater sense to do that one-on-one -on -one or as part of a crowd there? To what extent is the power of influence of others? You may say, yes, I don't like him. It might be a funny joke, but actually I don't really care for whatever. And therefore somehow I'll sit there steady face. If actually seven other people are sitting around actually and they're all enjoying it, do I feel as though somehow, no, I'm still going to hold my ground and not actually acknowledge it? I think sometimes the power of the crowd is very, very uh, pervasive. I think it's very difficult for people to ignore. You're carried along by the wave, in a sense. One on one, I remember very well when we first met, you told a very interesting set of stories at the dinner. And you posed, I remember, a couple of interesting moral or ethical dilemmas. What was interesting there was that there were probably 20, 25 people there, most of whom didn't know each other. And when you posed the questions, there was a certain diffidence. People were a bit reluctant to actually come forward, open and say, that's what I think. It was almost a halting progress mm -hmm. in terms of how the dialogue developed. A few people mentioned something and then suddenly two or three people had a bit more bravery, perhaps, or prepared to be a bit more outspoken. But never as if you've had those same conversations with those people one on one, yeah. they'd be much more forthright. I think the power of influence, which is what I'm getting at, the power of the crowd, is not to be ignored. Whatever the guys, you, know, you could talk about the football, frankly. Where, yeah. Yeah, why are there 62,000 people huddled around watching the game? But my interpretation of that is that um, crowds uh, stimulate in us, perhaps more than anything else, are. A question of belonging. So, and the example of the dinner, where people aren't talking, what they're all doing is taking cues from one another, I agree, because of the influence of the crowd. And nobody wants to break ranks by being the first one to talk, because being the first one to talk also jeopardizes potentially your belonging to the group, because you're no longer conforming to the agreed uh, group behavior at that moment, which is to remain quiet. And, and vice versa. Once everybody starts talking, like if you've ever been in a meeting, for example, where lots of people are contributing but you're not contributing, it begins to feel uncomfortable after a while because you feel like you're being left out, like you're not belonging. 
And the not belonging arises because the group is now saying, this is the group behavior for everybody to be talking. You're not participating in group behavior. Therefore, your belonging to this group is now a little bit in question in a way that it wasn't before. So it's not just, I think, that in a group we are influenced by other people to behave like them. I think it's also that we behave like other people in order to secure our belonging to that group and not be expelled.